Hey everybody, watch this review here, look at the Marvel Universe Thor. This is the modern version from the Hammer series. Um, this is the first Hammer figure I've actually picked up so far. I'm not terribly impressed with this packaging, although I love this really huge image of Thor here at the top. I mean, look at this. Instead of having like some character details or like even the name or anything, it just has a big warning sign. So lame. As always, it includes a secret classified file with a useless code, or presumably useless, as well as a replaced logo. If you recall, it was originally the S.H.I.E.L.D. logo, but then, you know, Hammer has basically replaced S.H.I.E.L.D., which is why Norman Osborn has also replaced Nick Fury on the back. And you'll notice he's even clutching a Green Goblin mask. Weird touch. And on the side, we have a Marvel Universe Series 2, Figure 12, which really is the kind of detail they should have put in this big block right here. Straight out of box, Thor has, you know, a pretty massive odor, which I guess is the kind of smell I associate more with cheaper figures. It reminds me of the type of plastic they used for, I think, like the Monster in My Pockets and so forth, where you have a solid cast color figure without any real paint but as you can see this really has paint on it so i'm not sure why it would have that kind of a scent exactly uh thor comes with his own detailed base here with his little name here so he can feel special as well as his hammer mojir or well his enchanted uru hammer but i'm really terrible at pronouncing that name You'll notice that there's actually no writing on it. And one of those top secret envelopes, which I may or may not discuss later. I meant to bring out the Marvel Select Thor just to give a comparison, but can't find it right now. I do think the level of quality on the body is somewhat comparable to it, but uh, the facial detail kind of sucks, which I did know going in because a few other people commented that Thor actually looks like somebody's granny, so I have to say that I somewhat agree with that assessment. This really isn't a flattering face sculpt, but the um, one from the Secret Wars 2-pack I didn't think really looked spectacular either in terms of face. Body-wise, though, I think this is a really great-looking figure. We have a lot of detail here on the tunic in terms of both paint and um, actual sculpt. The little, I don't even know what these little orb things are called, but, I mean, they show out nice and detailed. Lots of uh, billows and creases and, you know, everything else here in the cape in the back. Hair details, pretty cool. I mean, the coloring looks a little bit hokey. It means a lot of different shades of yellow with uh, little streaks of orange, but they definitely went all out. Um, head, though kind of weak they just clearly pasted these wings on and it really shows it looks like they're completely detached from the helmet plus i mean they're just look really really wide i mean i'm not too familiar with some of the more recent looks but i mean it might just be what it should look but the marvel select one i think had really thinner ones all in all you know pretty impressive looking figure Quick run through of articulation. You'll notice that he has one open fist, one open hand, and one closed fist. The wrist or L rotates. We have a single joint here at the elbow instead of the occasional ball and socket. Although I think that's more on some of the other lines. A rotating bicep, but due to the immense sculpt here, that will get impeded by the torso. The cape, so far as I'm aware, isn't removable. I wouldn't try removing it. Head rotates, um, somewhat impeded. I think you can probably get it around if you just manipulate the hair. The hair is a soft plastic and does not have any detailing on the inside. Looks kind of crappy. Also goes up and down a little bit, but unfortunately can't do a full up without pulling off the head. Crappy! But, um, just because of how much the hair goes in the back. 
which he knows kind of how the character works. He also has both a upper torso joint here with a full range of rotation, forward back, in addition to having a waist joint. Also, I didn't mention it, but the cape does sort of flip up. You'd need to suspend it somehow, though, if you wanted to get that kind of a pose. A uh, leg has sort of a normal range of motion, but it doesn't go back for some reason. But um, also, the tunic will sort of bend with time if you try to keep that forward. It goes out to the side as well. Rotation on the upper thigh, double joint here at the knee. I like the uh, reeves here, and then we have a ball and socket down here at the ankle, but because of the stuff on the side, not a lot of motion. In terms of height, he is a taller figure on par with the Secret Wars Doom and the Iron Man 2 War Machine. Here's a sort of standard Marvel Universe figure. As you can see, it's about half a head shorter. Although the Series 2 Thor does seem to have its share of problems, including the torso joint and waist joint, which seem to loosen up far too quickly, I think it's a pretty decent figure overall. I mean, the face definitely don't like, but I mean, the level of detail is pretty cool. And, you know, Thor is a character who works well on the 4-inch scale just because he fights giants non-stop, and it's tough to find figures to stand in for giants if you have a 6-inch figure. That means you'd have to have like a two or three foot figure to make up for that and you know a lot cheaper to go this route you know for instance here we have thor fighting the dreaded cyclops also just in case you care here are the secret files a little thor card with some character details and then a little note yep. there we go yep until next time